we're going to draw the Lewis structure for I3 minus. It's three iodine atoms with an extra negative charge. First thing I want to point out is that iodine is a non-metal, and actually these are only iodine atoms, so together these are going to form a molecular structure. I know that the structure itself is an ion, but it's going to be covalent bonds holding it together. That's going to be iodines sharing electrons with each other as opposed to transferring them from one iodine to another. Now, the way that I draw the Lewis structure for covalent compounds here is to count the total number of valence electrons. I have iodine here. Let's take a look. Iodine is in group 17, so each of the iodines brings seven valence electrons, but there's three of them. And in addition, I have a total charge of negative one, which means I have an extra electron. Electrons are negatively charged, so that negative is caused by the presence of an extra electron. Where did it come from? It could have come from anywhere. Usually a negative ion is paired with a positive ion. It came from whatever atom made that positive ion. There's no context here, so we don't know. The point is there is an extra. 7 times 3 plus 1 is 22 electrons total. Great. Now I'm going to draw my central atom and the surrounding atoms, and I'm going to single bond them all to start with. Well, it's just three iodines. So I'm going to put an iodine in the center, and then I'm going to single bond it to an iodine on either side. So far, so good. I'm going to add lone pairs to complete the octets of the outer atoms. Now, my outer atoms are these two iodines, and I already have two, four electrons total here. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now, um, the octet rule is the thing that says that the nonmetals want eight electrons in their outer shell to be happy. This iodine is now happy and stable because it has two, four, six, eight electrons surrounding it, and this iodine is happy for the same reason. This guy is not happy yet, but we're not done. If you have extra electrons, put them on the center atom. Now, I had, uh, I think I counted up to 16 electrons in this structure as I was putting the dots down, but I need 22 total. So I'm going to dump them all on the center atom in pairs. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Now the octet rule is the fact that nonmetals like to have eight electrons in their outer shell. But basically, anything from phosphorus and on can accommodate more than eight in its valence shell. That's called an expanded octet, and it's technically an exception to the rule, but not an exception on the low side, it's on the high side. So the fact that this iodine has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons around it is totally fine. It's definitely deep enough in the periodic table that it could have an expanded octet. If you have an incomplete octet on the center, which we don't, we actually completed it and expanded it, then we would move lone pairs from the outer atoms into the bonds to make double and triple bonds until that center atom had a full octet. That's not a problem here. We're done. The only other thing for a Lewis structure of an ion is that you have to put it in square brackets and put, a, put the charge in the corner there, just so that the people know it is a charged particle with either this many extra electrons or if it was a positive charge, it's short electrons. This is it. This is the Lewis structure for I3 minus. Congratulations, you did it. Best of luck.